Griffin. Hi there, everybody. It is Wednesday, and you know what that means. We're back with another episode of Unique Genius in 33. This is Joe Self here in Lima, Peru, and I am super excited today with our guest because we have a really involved member of Strong Communities who is doing great things in Jackson, Tennessee. We have with us today Kyle Spurgeon, and he is going to share with us everything he knows about competition and how it's served him and worked for him in his life. So Kyle, I would love for you to take a moment and let our folks know a little bit more about you and share your whole top five with us, if you would. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Joe. I'm, in, I'm president and CEO of the Jackson Chamber, Jackson, Tennessee. We are right between Memphis and Nashville on Interstate 40, community of uh, right at 65,000 people. And we're right in the middle of West Tennessee. And uh, so my top five, really quickly, uh, competition is number one. I think that's why we're talking today. Uh, strategic belief, arranger, uh, responsibility. And uh, as we talked yesterday, getting ready for this, I, it's, it's kind of neat to talk about how all of those work together and how competition drives uh, what I do here in the community. My job, uh, we do uh, everything from economic development to leadership development, to working with our small businesses. Tourism is housed here at the chamber. Uh, so there's a lot of ways where competition enters into that. And quite honestly, I think it's made me much better at what I do. And it probably, probably led me into this career, uh, having that strength of competition as, as number one. Ah, fantastic. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit about you. And now I just want to let everyone out there know that if we were looking at Gallup's definition of competition, they are going to say that people exceptionally talented in the competition theme measure their progress against the performance of others. They strive to win first place and revel in contests. Uh, that being said, the next piece that we go into, Kyle, that we share with all of our guests on here is we go into a piece called Celebrate and Evaluate. And we look at four characteristics of competition that are reasons for you to go, yes, I have competition. This is awesome. These are the great things about me with competition. And then we look at a couple of questions for evaluate to make sure that we have these questions in mind to keep ourselves in check if we start to notice that our competition is maybe going a little bit more to the raw side as opposed to the strength side, right? So I would love for you to listen to these points and kind of let us know if you feel like we're hitting the mark or right. if maybe we're even a little bit off base and it's okay if it doesn't feel completely that it relates to you. Um, and if you have any anecdotes or little stories about anything I share, we'd love to hear it, okay? Okay, let's roll. So celebrate, what you should celebrate about competition is you embody the spirit of winning. Winning together is just as important as winning on your own, that you have drive and tenacity that inspires others, and you know where to set the bar. How does that feel, Kyle? Yeah, that feels really good. Uh, and it, you know, Quick story about that is whatever we're doing here at the chamber, uh, it's mm -hmm. all about and whether that's myself or whoever else is leading a project, we do so much. And, and I tell folks, my title may be president, CEO, but at different times on different projects, you know, someone that runs our events here, Jill, she may be the president and CEO of that effort. And so we win as a team. And right. uh, I look at that, you know, there's a saying, you, you don't win if you take the mountain by yourself and everyone else is down there at the bottom. So yeah, I think that hits home right between the eyes. Excellent. Love to hear that. All right. Well, now we got to look at evaluate because we all know we're human and we are not always at our best. So it's good to have some questions to help us sort of recognize those moments. And so for competition, what I have here is, am I being a sore loser? Is my win becoming more important than our win? Am I setting the bar too high? And am I giving credit for performance and effort, even if the outcome wasn't what we desired? Yeah, I don't, uh, I would say, and that's maybe a maturity thing. So mm -hmm. I look back growing up playing sports or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure I was a sore loser at times. Sure. Uh, what really thrills me about my job now when I get most excited is when we, we're chasing projects. And in the economic development business, you are not going to win every project that you chase. Right. Now, to me, having competition, the mere piece of chasing that project uh, excited me. I get more excited when we're working economic development projects or any other projects where there's an outcome that it may be win or lose, but right. I don't 
look at it now as if just because we didn't get first place that we lost. Because right. I always want to put myself and our team in a position that, you know, if we lost and we gave it our best effort, we still won. Right. If we lost and we didn't do everything that we could, then we really did lose because we did not put ourselves in a position uh, to win. And sure. I, I think look at now, uh, you look at participation trophies with folks. Uh, I think, you know, if you're someone who strength or at least in your top five is competition, you despise competition. You, you despise participation trophies. And I look at, you know, a kid's baseball or softball tournament or soccer. If there's eight teams, you know, the sixth place team should not be getting a trophy. Right. Now you may celebrate those kids and should based upon their effort. And I mentioned to you yesterday, my wife and I run. Right. You get participation trophies for finishing a half marathon. Sure. That I personally think that's okay because you're competing against yourself. Uh, I'm never probably going to win a large half marathon because I'm not that fast. But my goal often is to beat my PR in that next race that we run. Sure. So that's where competition. Sure. So it's an internal competition. It's not really competing against other trying to be the fastest. And I can right. appreciate that. Yeah. Well, and I could see that. And I would, I would imagine that somebody with competition – you know, my competition is really, really low. So this is why I've loved sort of talking to you and um, understanding it because my son is very competitive and it's been very interesting to try and maneuver because he's still only five years old to try and work through some of that with him because I'm just not right. competitive at all, uh, really. But I love one of the words you use because you use maturity as you were talking about that. And that's really what we talk about with our talents too, is that we go from talent to strength. And talent is often in that raw form that may not be as mature. And so being able to recognize that, yeah, there's probably been some times when you've been a sore loser, but that maturity, right, is you honing over the years, you learning and recognizing what's going to serve you better and what's not going to really serve you. So yeah. I, I appreciate yeah. bringing yeah. that up. Yeah, if competition is your number one, or again, if it's in your top five, competition forces, I mean, it's, it's just an innate thought that you're going to put a bar out there to reach. And I guess if you're immature in your competition and you don't reach that bar, you're going to be mad at yourself or somebody else. And that exhibits itself in being a sore loser. Sure. Get that bar out there and you do everything you can uh, to reach that, but you still fail. I think you have to look at yourself and, and, and analyze, did you do everything possible you could, can to win? Because sometimes, particularly in what we do on the economic development side, we may actually do a better job than another community pursuing the project, but something outside of our control means that project goes to another location. And it sure. might revolve around simply something around logistics. The logistics costs of operating in Jackson are just a little bit higher than another location we compete against. Right. We can't change that, uh, but right. we can present Jackson in the best possible manner. Absolutely. Absolutely. I get that. Fantastic. So moving on through our traditional interview, what do you love about your competition? How does it serve you well? Yeah, I think, uh, again, in my job, uh, we have a lot of projects. And those projects uh, are, they have an end date or they have a culmination, of either winning or losing a project. And so I think it drives me to win. And in this position, you've got to be driven to win to be successful in the economic development business. Because again, you're sure. it's competition. You're chasing projects. And uh, again, I think it serves me well in this job. And it's probably one of the things that uh, probably maybe the biggest thing about my personality that has caused me to stay in this position for 30 years or in, in sure. this field. Right. Well, and I would imagine that that drive and tenacity that you have to win, you know, kind of inspires the rest of your team to believe they can do it too. Yeah, I think so. And it's, that's the key word is team. And mm -hmm. our staff of 12, 13 people is we've been able to build a very good team who works together and right. they all have competition when they're in their top five. Actually, I think I've only got one other employee who does, but uh, they've all got their different strengths and for me, as the president of the organization, we get to use those strengths in different manners. And I'm looking at it based upon my competitive strength about how can we win? Where sure. are we going to position our folks 
and their skills uh, to win this project or complete this task. Well, it sounds like you have a fantastic handle on your competition and you're using it at its highest strength form in a lot of ways, but we all are human and we have our moments. And so is there ever a time when your competition gets in your way or maybe drives you a little crazy, even in the past? You know, it might be, uh, I don't know if it drives me crazy. It may drive her crazy a little bit, but she's a little bit the same way. My wife and I run together uh-huh. and we're always checking our Garmin. Uh, I do more so about uh, the gra- you know, how fast we ran, how, not necessarily all the time how far we ran, but how far we ran each week or month or things like that. Even the point of checking your Garmin app in the morning to see how well you slept. Right. Uh, what's interesting to me about my personal, I don't want to design those graphs, but I sure do right. want to look. Right. And you want the information that it's going to give you to get better. Exactly. Right? And sometimes I feel like that may be almost an OCD thing about looking at that information so much, but Uh it's the only way you're going to get better when you're competing with yourself. If you know what you did yesterday or what you did two weeks ago. Interesting. So kind of always having that performance measurement, that yardstick out there. Yeah. Seeing what you're doing, right? Yeah. And looking back when I first uh, went online, (laughs) my sister actually gave me the strengths book for Christmas. I don't know, six or seven years ago, Uh going back, taking that test. And what sold me on uh, this process and understanding was looking at my top five and then reading what they said. It is like, well, dang, that that's exactly how I feel. Or I look at myself and it it hit me right between the eyes is that, you know, this stuff that they're talking about is very valid. I mean, we've all taken dozens of personality tests. Sure. But to me, this one far and away uh, told me who I was, and I and I said, "Yeah, that's that's exactly right." Awesome, I love that. So, competition. Obviously, you took the test later on in life, right? This isn't something you've known about yourself your whole life. So, wh- how do you see competition kind of as a thread throughout your life? Where do you recognize it? You know, from growing up and as a young man. Yeah, I, I enjoyed playing sports growing up. Uh, whether it be baseball or basketball or, or whatever that was. And uh, I enjoyed the competition and I look back and, you know, I don't think I was a sore loser, but probably at times I, I really was. Um, yeah. I played high school baseball. I did not play high school basketball or football, but yet every afternoon in our neighborhood, we were competing somewhere. Uh, I look back thinking, you know, I, not just a huge card player, but we've played a lot of card games. I always wanted to win. Um, and then I've got three children uh, and then two stepdaughters. My three children, I would always compete with them because my belief was as a dad, if we're out in the yard or in the driveway playing basketball, yeah, I shouldn't just let them win. That doesn't help them. I was just going to ask, did you ever let them win? Yeah, and I think that's made them stronger. I mean, it wasn't to the point where – if Matt's five years old and I'm sitting here blocking shots because he's three, that doesn't happen, but it's always teaching them how to compete and how no one's just going to give you a victory. You got to earn it. And Uh, uh, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. My parents never let me win. Yeah, My parents never let me win. And that's one of those things I'm, I'm challenged with with my son because if he doesn't win, Oh, <laughs> it is. It is. You're not it gonna is let not a pretty. It is not a pretty sight, quite honestly. Right. So that's that's what I'm just navigating right now. So if you have any tips, I'll I'll take them. Um, the uh, all right. So so we've seen competition weaving in and through your life, obviously. And you mentioned that maybe this is something that you know may not bother you, but maybe bothers your wife. Is there something about competition that you would want others to know? So for those who don't have competition they might misunderstand that desire to win or they might misunderstand a certain drive that you have or that need to measure performance all the time. What, what would you want someone to know about competition that doesn't have it? Yeah, I think in my case, it's almost like it may be such a high level of competition. I look at other people that are in positions, whether it be an athlete or a CEO of a company, it's like, how can you not have competition in your top five? Because you're, <laughs> You're striving to win in whatever you're doing. Um, so I, I guess for me is I hope now that as you grow up and you mature, that I exhibit that competition more as a pure drive to do something sure. 
other than exhibiting a win at all cost attitude, because I think right. that's wrong too. And that's a trap that someone with competition could fall into. I mean, sure. if you don't have the other skills to complement what you're doing, winning at all cost is an extremely bad thing. Sure. It may sure. encourage you to break laws or do things that, you know, aren't moral or whatever. But if you don't have those other good skills around you, uh, it, it can be a negative. And so I, I want people to know in my case, it's not, it, it's just a drive to win and do well. Sure. Well, and, and it's interesting that you bring that up because a lot of times we'll look at certain talents and how one talent might be confused for another talent or can look like another talent. Sometimes a combination of talents looks like another talent. And I have Maximizer really high. And I know a few other people who have Maximizer, which we're actually going to be talking about next week. And Maximizer is a strive for excellence. But it's really about the energy you're going to put in for the output you're going to receive. It's really an ROI driven talent but it can look like competition a lot, right? Because you're striving for this best. You're right. striving for a different bar. You're looking at it, but a maximizer will never start at zero to go to three. They'll start at five to go to 10, but they'll never start at zero to go to three. They probably won't even start at zero to try to go to 10. They just don't feel like yeah. starting at the bottom. Like they're going to take something that's already there and make it better, but they won't necessarily okay. start from scratch. So it's interesting because I know some people, you know, I know other people whose maximizer exhibits a bit more like a competition type talent. And so when you were talking about leaders, you're like, how do you not have competition? How do you not want to be the best? I'm like, well, you know, it could be maximizer that they have in there. Or it could be achiever. Right. Right. There's some other things that also have that drive and that initiative um, that go out there. It's just sort of the uh, internal and external motivations that get that talent going. Right. Right. Even though they have a similar outcome. And I love that because our talents don't tell us what we do. They tell us how we do it. Exactly. Right. And I think that's so key to um, understanding in all of this. Okay. So here's my favorite question. And I love having fun with this question. So who do you think of as a famous person or fictional character um, that exhibits competition the way you see it, the way you feel it? Yeah. And uh, I still, we talked yesterday and I think the first person that came to mind, and I guess just because I really enjoy watching him and he's, I mean, he prepares and he's going to win is Peyton Manning. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of it may be just his personality, how it comes out. I mean, he, you see the sense of humor that he's got, but when he walks out on the field, you can tell he's prepared. Uh-huh. And I'm sure that Peyton Manning didn't go into football to break a lot of records, but right. he prepared himself and now he can measure himself against you know greatest quarterbacks of all time, which he is one of those. And uh, so he may take this test and competition may not be in his top five, but I got to think it's up there really be somewhere. It will be up there somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of <laughs> fictional characters uh, out there too uh, that do that, but just that's who I keep coming back to is, uh, and I'm sure again, I could go through a lot of athletes uh, that do that. Yeah. Um, in, in the business world, and I, I don't know a whole lot about him other than things I read, but a, a Richard Branson, Virgin Airlines. Sure. His, he seems like he's someone that uh, also exhibits that because of all the different businesses that he's involved in. And uh, I would think a lot of uh, CEOs across the world exhibit that. Uh, and it may, but it may be maximizer, like you, uh, like you pointed out. Sure. I mean, we can all have those different motivators, but I can, I can see where Richard Brains would come up. And that's why it's like, you know, it's, it's fun to talent spot or speculate, but at least it's, it's a way for us to learn more about these talents and, and the strengths and sort of what we feel exhibits that. So we get a little bit better at identifying them when we're out there and talking to others, because as we think more about things like this, we start to think in the language of strengths. Right. And so I think it's a fun exercise to kind of go through and, take your number one talent or any of your talents and go, okay, who's a famous person that I think does this too? Who do I think is out there thinking like me who does that? And then you start to recognize those patterns right. in other places. So I just kind of enjoyed an exercise. It's really weird. Cause as we were talking, I didn't think about this yesterday, but a history nerd kind of sciencey thing. I was thinking about the competition between Tesla and Edison. And I don't know it would be competition at its highest form or highest level because Edison was I would think Edison was pretty competitive, consistently trying to be first with things out there and kind of 
potentially even stepping on people in his way. I'm not saying it's a high exhibition of competition, but it's something that came to me that it'd be interesting, you know, yeah. if you thought about that in a certain way. And I think the way you describe that, that may also lead you to think about how countries and organizations uh, just themselves as a, you know, like the U.S. and Russia and the space race back 50 sure. years ago. Sure. That's competition. Right. And there had to be leaders in place that that's that what. That's that way. Let's win. Yeah. Let's win this. We got to yeah. be first. Right. That's right. Yeah. No, I I think that's really interesting. So we have a few minutes left and I know we got started a couple of minutes late today for a couple of technical difficulties. Not that those out there who are listening now are going to know that. Um, but for any of you who are out there, do you have any questions for Kyle around his competition or anything you would like to know about competition or him? You can throw it in the chat or you can also take yourself off mute and uh, give us a quick question. So I'm going to give a second, see if anybody out there would like to ask you something, Kyle. No one has a question for Kyle. I can't believe that. All right. So here's one. Yeah. Oh, what is your greatest achievement? And that, that's a local question from Allison. That uh, is a local question from Allison. Uh, it, it's a good question because I don't know that I can narrow it down to one. And I'll just, this may not, for Allison, she'll recognize this because these are things in Jackson. But yeah. any of the projects, uh, and, and I'll, Maybe if I can narrow that question down to my job here, okay. but any of the projects we've located in Jackson, uh, whether it be uh, UGN, uh, Pacific, Toyota, um, expansions of existing industries here, chasing those projects and winning them for the community, uh, mm -hmm. those are all achievements uh, for me. But it's, that's just for me personally, but they're achievements for the entire community. So I would take any of those projects that we've won while I worked here uh, as uh, personal uh, achievements for me and the team. Excellent. I, if anybody else has a question, throw it in there. But I, I just had one that occurred to me. So we talked about that maturity factor and we talked about maybe you were a sore loser when you were younger, you know, kind of hard to remember. We don't always remember those moments. Who do you think modeled competition well for you that you have developed this maturity and this idea of it's more about performance and effort than it is necessarily reaching the bar. Like, who do you think modeled that for you? You know, I look back growing up, um, my parents were very supportive. My dad was baseball coach of our teams uh, through Little League and as, as a teenager. But my dad was not one of those guys that said, you got to go out and practice every day. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, he pushed right. me. But I look at it, though, he provided me more opportunities to do that <clears throat> instead of being that dad that's always on your head, pushing you boom, 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 like that. That question is good because my dad was in the military, uh, so he had that military structured mindset of being successful. Uh, my mom, growing up, uh, she was uh, an all-state basketball player. Oh, okay. And so I guess taking those two personalities, but they were, they were more supportive other than, and, and I've coached baseball and softball with my kids, and unfortunately you see some parents who are like reliving their childhood by forcing their kids to do things and just berating them when they don't succeed. My parents weren't like that at all. Right. Yes, maybe they had a level of competition that came out that way in providing me those opportunities through sports. Now I will say and that like my parents it taught me if I was gonna do something, do it right and right. don't quit. Uh, you know, if, if you if you joined a team and you didn't like it, you're not quitting till the season's over. Right. So I guess, you know, I've never thought about it, but I would think maybe my parents modeling that. And then as I was exposed to sports in high school and being a fan of sports, that even I didn't participate in, maybe that's where right. it came. And probably having the right coaches, I would imagine. I mean, besides your parents, even with all the teams you're on, having the right coaches that kind of model yeah. that type of competition yeah. as well, right? Yeah, a, a, the right kind of coach is either going to make or break you. Sure. I look back and I, for the most part, had very supportive coaches. And that, uh, again, I guess that a lot of them were, yes, we are in this to win, but it's not win at all costs. Right. There's right. Some and I like I that. I mean, I think that's a great, 
you know, reminder for people with competition, especially if they're not quite at that mature level, is that it's not winning at all costs. Right. Exactly. And, and that team spirit over individual in, you know, in certain situations, especially in organizational situations. Uh, Christine has a question. She says, competition is 26 on her list. However, Maximizer is 11. So she's similar to me. Hi, Maximizer, low competition. Uh, very interesting based on your earlier, very interested based on your earlier comments to consider the similarities between the two. Do you find the way that you measure progress influences others to strive toward competition? And is your measure of success outwardly directed or seen? Yeah, I think so here. Uh, and it's probably, it comes out and based around the type of people I want to have on my team. Sure. And we have a very flexible work environment here. Okay. You know what your job is and our hours are 8.30 to 5. But if you've got a project to work on, you don't have to be here. And if you work at night, then you may not come in the next morning till 10. So that's a flexibility that we've developed in the team that we've put together. Right. So what I think is my competition, when we hire people here and build that team, I know what my strength is, but I want someone on the team that even though competition may not be their number one, they're going to strive to do things for the team that's going to cause all of us to win. Um, right. Our outcomes, you would think someone like me would be someone, because I look at charts and everything on my garment and different things like that, that every staff meeting or whatever, we've got charts. And Here's our yardstick. Here's where yeah. we are. Right. So we have that, but I don't necessarily do it in every staff meeting or every board sure. meeting that we have. We have capital campaigns here. We have strategic plans. I do make sure we're meeting those goals with our staff. They know what their expectations are. Um, so I'm kind of being long-winded about ask, answering that question, but I think it comes out through the expectations that uh, I guess me as a president and CEO sure. play upon our team. And again, I'm very blessed. We've got a great team here, and I wouldn't be successful without them doing what, right. what they Right. We have a couple of minutes left and I saw another question pop up from Allison real quick, which is going to be the last question I'm going to be able to accept you guys, but you're welcome to send more through. Do you find that your belief and responsibility strengths serve to keep your competition in check and to help Absolutely. ensure that you not strive to just win at all costs? Yeah. And I'm so whoever asked that question. Allison did. Allison did. Great. Thank you, Allison, because Ooh, uh, we talked about that yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. And I, I'm very proud of this fact, and it's we talk about competition, strategic belief, or ranger responsibility, and I've I've told this story to anybody that, that I've worked with on the strength stuff, particularly locally uh, here with Sherry and, and Lori, and that I want to figure out a way to win, and I'm going to beat your butt doing it, but I'm not going to lie, cheat, or steal to do it. So I want to win and be fair about it, and then through the maturity part about that, I'm not going to gloat about it. But uh, sure. I think that the belief and the responsibility uh, play a key part in that. And then the strategic and arranger, you, you figure out how to win. Sure. From there. I, I would never, I would much rather lose than break rules trying to win. Right. So I would usually ask at the end this to wrap this up. Allison loves that answer, Kyle. She's Great. very Thank proud to have you in Jackson. Um, I'm sure everyone in Jackson is very happy to have you. I'm down here in Lima, Peru, and I would love to have you around here. So I can imagine the way you inspire everybody there. Um, I, I normally would ask you sort of personally what strengths is meant to you, but you alluded to that a little bit earlier on. And because your organization is really becoming a strengths-based type organization through strong communities, how do you feel strengths has benefited the chamber? Yeah. Here's a specific example. Uh, and I won't uh, mention names because folks here in the audience won't know. Allison will probably figure this out, but we had someone uh, in a membership position and over time we had had uh, some folks move in and out of the organization as they were moving or got, they got promotion to somewhere else. And so this person that was inside handling our membership, we wanted to put her into more of a position where she was doing outside sales membership instead of, taking the data that comes from that and inputting it and managing the back end piece of our membership side of the chamber. Mm -hmm. And when you meet this person, you would think, well, gosh, she needs to be out selling. She's got an outgoing personality, seems to enjoy that. It's articulate, dresses well, all these things. That was the last thing she wanted to do. <laughs> and when she took the strengths assessment, 
Yeah. It told us, you know what, Kyle and Ryan, you're right. You're wrong. She doesn't need to be out selling. She loves and she has the strengths to be doing data input and then yeah. utilizing her skills that way. Right. And so to me, I think any organization, once you, all your employees go through that, it, it's incumbent upon you to look at, you know, have you got people in the right spots? And then right. as you're forming different task forces, you know, the worst thing you could do is if we had three people in my organization that had competition in the top five, you didn't need, you don't need to put all three of us on that task force. You need sure. someone on that team that's actually going to get down and figure out, you know, these are the, get down into the weeds about the, this is the process that we need. Right. To right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, we are running down to our last minute here. And so I just want to say thank you to everyone who tuned in today. Um, this is a fantastic conversation, Kyle. Thank you so much thank for you. sharing your time with us, sharing your knowledge and experience of competition. I think there's going to be a lot of benefit for a lot of people out there who are going to listen to this, especially for other leaders in their communities who are really looking to infuse this into the community and what that could mean for them. So thank you very much for sharing that with us today. Um, I encourage everyone to check out Strong Communities Facebook page to keep up with some of what's going on. And that is Strengths-Based Strong Communities when you look that up. Thank you for your time today. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Same bat time, same bat channel, 1130 Central, 1230 Eastern here on Zoom. Thank you and have a wonderful, wonderful week.